Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love online every Saturday and every Tuesday. And we're getting ready right now to get into the word. So turn with me. God wants you to know he cares for you. He cares deeply for you. And a lot of times we get caught up in the cares of this world because we don't recognize just how much God is truly in our corner. So let's go right now to Mark chapter 4, verse 19. And we're going to deal with the cares of this world. We're going to start at verse 13. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise that are sown in stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves. And so endure, but for a time afterwards, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some 100-fold. Now, I just want you to understand the cares of this world and what you're going through the fruit that you bear as a result will show where you are, whether you are the one that's on stony ground, whether you are the one that's thorns, or whether you're good ground and you bear much fruit or little fruit. The bottom line is you're bearing fruit and it's good ground. So let's go on to the next verse because I want you to get these. These are the kind of things that happen. See, when life happens and the stuff hits the fan in our lives, we oftentimes get caught up. When we get caught up, we forget to focus on God. Many times we forget to focus on God and how much he's in our corner. And we end up focusing on the whys, the wherefores, the whos and the whats and the winds and the hows, and we start getting caught up in anxiety and fears and worries, concerns. You are to cast all those cares on the Lord because he cares for us. Now, this is what the Luke chapter 21, 34 says, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. See, you can get so caught up that you end up becoming frustrated. You end up getting nervous, restless. Your stomach starts to churn and cramp up and ache. Your head starts to pound. Your blood starts to boil. And everything in you wants to retreat, run, find a rock to hide in. And just say, Lord, stop the world. Let me off. I want to get off. I'm done. No, 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 no. Whatever comes against you in this life is God set up for your next blessing or your next miracle. Sometimes 
you have to endure what's coming against you because if it's not a miracle of finances or changing your circumstance sometimes god wants to change you remember that it's not all about materialism sometimes god wants to change you and when he wants to change you he will leave you there for a while and what that does it's like cooking a big pot of beef or whatever kind of meat you want to think of you're boiling this meat you're boiling it whether it's a big old piece of turkey a big old piece of of beef whatever you're boiling it you notice during the first hour of boiling scum rises to the surface you notice that those are all the impurities and the bacteria and, and, and ugh, the fat and all that mess that's all the unnecessary stuff that you need to skim off the top and dump it you skim it you dump it you skim it you dump it and god will use life to skim your scum and dump it because you don't need that mess in your flesh it will sabotage all your blessings if you allow your flesh to be in control so as a result you must allow god to do the skimming but while he's skimming the boiling continues and it's the heat that we don't like it's that cooking purifying process we don't like but in that process comes lessons we learn we get to know ourselves we get to know where we fall short we also get to know where our strengths are so it's not just learning about what a wretch what a wretched creature you are what a lost cause you are no you're also to learn all the beauty that god has placed inside of you and sometimes under pressure the most beautiful ointments, the most beautiful aromas. Crush a rose, rub it all in your hand, and then smell your hand. It's not nice to the rose to be crushed, but the aroma that comes out of it, what's inside of you will come out. God will get rid of the scum, and he'll allow the aroma to rise. Because you're learning you're growing you're developing you're strengthening you're getting understanding with understanding you're getting wisdom with wisdom you're getting more strength all these experiences are strengthening your hope because the more you go through the more you see god come through for you the more you see god come through for you the more you get hope the more your hope builds, the more your faith builds. The stronger your faith, the quicker the blessings, the higher the blessings. I mean, you, be, you find yourself moving from glory to glory, from strength to strength, and you're just steadily climbing, climbing. You're ascending on a steady basis. Even if on your way up you fall flat on your face, you're falling up. You're not falling down because God, has got you right in the palm of his hand while you go through this crushing process but through the crushing process blessings are on the way you know i, I mentioned in the other video that an olive has to be crushed in order for you to benefit from its oil hmm wine the grapes have to be crushed in order for the wine to be created so you have to know that there are some things where crushing is necessary it's not it's not even a necessary evil so to speak it's just necessary it's part of the making process so what you're going through does not mean god is punishing you it doesn't mean you're paying for what you did 10 years ago when you told so-and-so off and you slapped so-and-so in the face when you were all in your flesh. It doesn't mean that you're paying for, 
for a crime that you committed back then that you got away with. That doesn't mean, no, you're in God's hands now. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So you are becoming new. He is renewing you, revamping you, reprogramming you, rebuilding you. All of these life experiences are meant to put you on the path of progression, growth, maturity, strength, anointing. Ah. And as you go through this, then you start to realize where your weaknesses are. A wise man, a strong man can admit his weakness. A weak man cannot. Think of that. So be glad that you can see and acknowledge and admit your weaknesses. That's a good thing. Very good. Half the battle, by the way. Then on the other hand, you have to look at the fact that there are some things that some people, just like we heard one of our brothers today, he took responsibility. You know how many people don't even take responsibility for the role they play in their trials? Oh my goodness. See, God can work with people who can take responsibility. How many of you are in denial and everything you're going through is everybody else's fault? But you want God to come through for you. But God is telling you, you got to see before you can go. I can't take you anywhere if you won't open your eyes. Open your eyes and see. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free not your denial. Being in denial will never get you free, will never free you up, will never get you out of your dilemma, out of your quandary. No, but acknowledging truth will. God says, I desire truth on the inward part. All of this that God is doing is a steady indication, steady evidence and proof of how much he loves and cares for us. I remember I was in a classroom. Let me share this with you. In one of my little stories. I was in a classroom working with special ed children. I was a teacher's aide. The teacher I worked with, I hated the special ed system because they would throw paperwork at the kids so they were just steadily reading and writing all day long reading and writing to me that would drive me cuckoo i need somebody to interact with me in order for me to really learn everybody's not a literal learner some people uh, need to hear it in their ears need to see it with their eyes now okay so what ended up happening was i started getting more and more miserable on this job now, because of the preaching and the teaching at the church I was attending, and I thank God for Pastor Cushman's teaching and preaching, because according to their teaching, when you're in a situation that is unpleasant, that goes against the grain of your flesh, we're still talking about the cares of this world and how God cares for you. Now, when you're dealing with things coming against the grain of your flesh, coming against everything in you. Oftentimes, God has placed you in that to work stuff out of you, the scum, and impart things into you, the fruit. So, now that you know what's happening in your life, I know that made that real simple, didn't it? Yeah. When I was in this class, I would sit there doing paperwork. She would hand me a bunch of papers to grade. So I'm sitting in the back of the class. She's in the front of the class. I'm writing. I'm doing my thing. She told me to grade the papers. Ergo, that's what I'm doing, right? Listen to this. She would look up at me and say, Miss So-and-so, what are you doing? 
I mean, she wouldn't say so-and-so. She called me by my former married name, Miss So-and-so. I'll just say Miss Love. That's my present name. So she would say, Miss Love, what are you doing? And I, I you know, Miss Love, you know, in my flesh, I wanted to say, well, what did you ask me to do? What did you tell me to do? Grade the papers. Well, that's what I'm doing. What I was told. Nope. Uh, I was I was in the spirit, so I was cool. I said, um, well, I'm grading the papers like you told me. I'm trying to say it nicely. Ah! You know, like, duh. So she says, uh, but did you see Patrick? And I'm thinking, uh, you're the teacher. You watch Patrick. I'm grading the papers. And I, and I, I said, no, I didn't see Patrick. She said, well, Patrick was just doing this, that, and the other. She said, see, one of the things I need you to do is have an eye to watch what the kids are doing while you're doing your work. You watch from the rear. I'll watch from the front. And I'm saying to myself, okay, 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 okay. Something else I didn't do right. I'm starting to feel picked on. Think about it. How many of us have felt that on a job? Given words of correction. I'm starting to feel picked on. So I'm like, okay. So I'm like, Lord, help me. Oh, you know, I'm not good at multitasking. I just want to get my little job done and go home. But see, God is stretching me. I'm looking at her like she's picking on me. But because of the teaching at my church at the time, it broadened my thinking to understand the possibility that God actually might be stretching me and it's not just an attack from the devil and she picking on me. Because that's the way we deal with life a lot of times. Look what they did to me. Look how they talk about me. Look how they, 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 they nitpicking. They, 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 they just picking on me. I bet they ain't looking at anybody else like they're looking at me. We go through that. Woe is me. So here I am feeling woe is me, but thinking and reflecting on the preaching that's been imparted to me. Wanting to get up, go home, and quit. But knowing that sometimes a good stay is better than a bad run. So I'm sitting up there staying. Staying the course. Enduring it. Hating it. Feeling picked on. Now, you look at that and say, now what good could that have done? The whole year, it was... What are you doing? Are you looking at? Will you please make sure so-and-so doesn't? You know, so-and-so was just doing this, but you were so caught up in your paperwork. I really need you to do this. I need you to do that. I need you to focus more. I need you to give more. I need more. I need more. I need more. All right already. Golly. That was my attitude. But by the same token, because of the Holy Spirit in me, keeping flesh under control, I'm saying, Lord, show me what is wrong. Show me, how do I handle this, Lord? And it was as if God was saying, she wants more, give more. She wants you to do more, do more. I can't get any comfort from you either. Right. But I did. I obeyed what God was leading me to do. Stay the course and put up more. Do more. Give more. Oh, finally, one day that season was over. I didn't quit. It was just over. That year was over. The summer break was coming and I was going to be assigned to a new teacher the next fall. So I always wondered what was all of that stretching about? Check this out. Check it out. Whew, I'm feeling this now because Sometimes we want to cry through the crushing and the stretching and the breaking, but we don't realize that it's for our future. We need this. Years later, years, over two decades, maybe 15 years, not quite two decades later, I'm with my husband, Milton DeVore. Milton DeVore is blind, completely blind having lost his eyesight. We knew each other for years at church, but then he lost his eyesight. And then he started dating me and, and we got married. Now, what I picked up on during the time 
that he went through different phases of his physical crisis, having a minor stroke, uh, having a bleeding ulcer, all kind of stuff going on. I'm picking up on stuff that I would not have even noticed if I had not gone through that experience. And because I saw and I watched and I kept giving more attention and more energy to someone other than myself, I was able to ward off with God's help. I was able to ward off a lot of physical uh, catastrophes that would have happened to Milton had I not been paying attention to what was going on. I recognize that he, he was having a stroke. I recognized that something was going on in his abdomen that wasn't right, and I called the paramedics just in time. If 40 is normal for the amount of blood you have in your body, I don't know what the count is, but 40, he only had 15 left. He almost bled out. But because I was watching, listen to this, that class blessed me to save my husband's life a, nu a numerous amount of times. Had I bailed out because my feelings were getting hurt, my God, I might have been a, a widow at 55 rather than 60. Think about it. Whatever you're going through, if it seems unfair, God cares for you. He knows what's coming in your future. God knew Milton and I would be married down the road. I had to be prepared way ahead of time. Because God was going to, Milton always told me, baby, you're my eyes. You're my eyes. But I was not only his eyes to help him get from here to there. I was also watching his back and watching his, his, his physical condition and watching the symptoms. And I was watching him with an eagle eye. I had never done that before. Never had to. Whatever you're going through now, you may not see the fruit of it for 30 years, but one day you'll look back and say, oh my goodness, that's why I had to go through that. Look at this. I'm equipped for this now. I would not have been had I not seen that through. When I worked for the nurse's aide, I used to look at all the jobs I ever had. I drove the bus. I worked as an interpreter for the, for the deaf. I worked as an activities director for senior deaf adults in a, in a deaf home. I worked as a, as a uh, city bus driver. I worked as a, um, oh goodness, I had a lot of different. I worked as a maintenance person, cleaning toilets and bathrooms. I worked as a school bus driver. I mean, I had all these different types of jobs, teacher's aide, uh, hairstylist. I mean, I had all kinds of stuff. Now, check this out. I always wondered, I could line up all the jobs and say, oh, I could see what role that played in my life. But I never could figure out, why did I do nurse's aid? I couldn't see what good that did. Couldn't see it. And then one day while I was taking care of my father, the Lord brought to my mind the question I always had about that job. I was equipped to take care of my father till the day he died in his own house, in his own bed, because of the booties I had to clean, the unpleasant jobs I had to do as a nurse's aide. I was a certified nurse's assistant and I could not see what good that job did in my life. What could that possibly add and I was not saved when I did that job. But God brings all things together and culminates them. All of your experiences will somehow, somehow come together. All things work together for good to those that love God and who are called according to his purpose. Even some of the pickiness of your own parents some of the criticisms you took as abuse. 
some of the, the most negative experiences you had will ward off future negative experiences because you will see them coming a mile away. And uh, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I'm not getting caught up in that mess. No, that is not good. I, I smell it all the way from back here. No, thank you. Because of those negative experiences in your life that you may have failed royally in back then. You ain't failing now. Ha! Life is full of lessons, growth, development, purging, pruning, the cutting away, cleansing, purifying, strengthening. Oh, there's just so much in life. Benefit from life. That is our gift from God. Benefit from that gift. Don't demolish it. Don't waste it. Don't abuse it. Benefit. Let me read this next verse and then we're, we're about to close. Yeah. Verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 7. I'm going to start at verse 6. Humble yourself. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all, not some, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He can't just devour you on humbug. No, you give him permission and then he may devour. You see what I'm saying? Because we only, it's like giving the thief the key to your house. You give a thief the key to your house and the thief can break in and steal. Well, you can't blame the thief for stealing. You can blame yourself for giving him the key. And many of us give the enemy the keys to destroy our lives, to devour us, because we allow our flesh to have preeminence over our judgment calls, over our feelings, over our emotions, over our reactions, over our perspective of life, over our, our uh, view of God, whatever. Don't allow Satan to devour you. He can only do it if you give him the keys. Remember, don't give him the keys. Cast all your cares on God. He's the one that cares for you. Not just cares for you like, oh, my poor little pitiful baby. Look, oh, they're really going through. No, he cares for you. He's caring. He's a caregiver. He serves you. He protects you. He provides for you. He loves you. He covers you. Oh, my goodness. If you only knew how God cares for you. All that he does to ward off danger seen and unseen. He cares for you on a constant basis. He is caring and caring and caring. He cares for you. That's why he sent his son not only to die for our sins, but through his son's death and resurrection, we got imparted with a precious gift, the gift of God's Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit empowers us to go beyond flesh, empowers us to go beyond our own limits. The Holy Spirit not only empowers us, the Holy Spirit is power. And when we utilize the power of the Holy Spirit under the authority of the name of Jesus, we can speak things out of our lives. That's part of God caring for us with all that he's equipped us with. All the weapons of warfare, the spiritual armor, the word of God, the power of praise. The power of prayer. Mm. So much to this walk with God that shows how much he cares. 
Watch him. Seek him. Cry out to him. He said, if you ask me for bread, will I give you a stone? No. He cares for us. He knows we have need before we ask. He knows what they did to you, but they did it to you because you belong to him and they hate him. And if they hate him, Jesus said, they, they will always hate us as well because we are in him. We're not of the world and the world is not in us. So the world will hate us and they will do dirt. But God knows how to blow that dirt off of us and rise us up and make us shine bright as a diamond, reflecting his glory in the midst of their mess. And then they look and gnash their teeth. He'll make them see you get risen up high. Somehow they'll get to know it, whether they hear through it through the grapevine, they'll know it. God's blessing is on you. And God doesn't bless you in secret, baby. He says, whatever you do in secret, I will reward thee openly. Let God care for you. Go to him in prayer. Read his word. These are the things you do to appropriate his love, his care, his concern, his works in your life, his intervention. Watch him intervene on your behalf. Watch him move the enemy away. Watch him bind him up and tie him up and kick him to the curb on your behalf. He will rebuke kings for our sake. How much more the enemy? Come on now. Trust in him. Seek him. Cry out to him. Pour your heart out to him. Pray. Praise him in the midst of the darkest hour. Praise him. Give glory to his name. Don't blame him, praise him. If you're angry with him and frustrated because you don't know what's going on and he's not telling you, praise him anyway. Lord, I'm upset with you, but I praise you because I know you're a good God. Help me, Lord, because I'm so upset. <laughs> Give me peace. You know, you got to pray that. You got to be real with God. This is frustrating. I don't like it. But do what you got to do. Yeah. Sometimes you got to. It's a sacrifice of praise sometimes. I'm telling you the truth. Sometimes it's a sacrifice of obedience. I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to. <sighs> okay. If you insist. Help my attitude. Obedience is better than sacrifice. God bless you. Be encouraged. Keep praying. Stay in God's word. Whatever you do, don't give up on the one who cares for you. Cast all your cares on him. Cast your worries on him. Cast your fears on him. Just take your hand and say, Lord, here, here's my situation. Here are my financial problems. Here are my worries. Here are my fears. Lord, I feel like that. <laughs> Lord, take that too. And give me your peace. Give me your peace. Give me more faith. And encourage me through your word. Lead me to scripture. Tell me what to read. And talk to me. Make somebody call me and encourage me, whatever it takes. And when you pray to God, be specific. Don't generalize. The more specific your prayers, the more specific your answers to the prayer will be. God bless you. Stay encouraged. God is for you. And he knows how to take care of what belongs to him. There's a song. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna quote it. I'm not gonna sing it. I'll just sing the very first verse. Teach me to point my face to the storm and stand my ground when troubles rise up all around. 
I'll have no fear. Fear has driven many gallant warriors to their knees. Broken hearts and wounded souls have caused them to retreat. Not me, Lord. No, not me. I take the sword of the spirit in my hand, holding firmly to its truth. The sword is the word of God. Knowing all the power within as I march on to the fight, I see the people as they're killed, as Satan slays them with his lies. And compassion rages deep within my soul. And I know once more, I want to be a warrior for the Lord. A dying world is turning in the darkness stumbling through the night. A cry of hope sings in the distance, but still no light. A silhouette of the cross hangs sadly on the wall while dust collects on the thoughts of bloodshed for us all. Oh Lord, oh Lord, how will they know? I Take the sword of the spirit in my hand, holding firmly to its truth, knowing all the power within as I march on to the fight. I see the people as they're killed, as Satan slays them with his lies, and compassion rages deep within my soul. And I know once more, I want to be a warrior for the Lord. I've got to be a warrior for the Lord. Okay, that's good enough for now. But anyway, I hope that ministers to you. That's the attitude we must have when troubles rise up all around. No, I'll have no fear. I'm not going to be driven to my knees and retreat and run away because and turn tail and run because a little problem, a little obstacle. No, no, no. I've got a risen Savior. He's in the world today. Daddy's pulling for you and me. We are not alone in this battle. Front the battle, he'll win it. Just stay in it. God bless you. Amen.